Welcome to the Sid's View Podcast. <laughs> okay, no more mac and cheese. Mm. No more hot dogs. No oh, hot dog, hot dog. Hot, hot diggity dig- dog. No, the hot dog. <laughs> I knew there was something special about them dogs, so they had that 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 taste. That Nathan's taste. That Minutes Nathan's ago. taste. I did it. Dude, I was eating some corn dogs today, and I forgot how much I love corn dogs. <laughs> corn dogs are tremendous. Are they? I haven't had one. They're so good. I've never had, had one. You've never had one? Even bad corn dogs are still good. Well, that's I, what we're having next week. Corn really? dogs? Corn dogs? <laughs> yeah! Let's go! <laughs> Can we get strawberry shortcake one night? Sure. <laughs> but you don't eat the cookies I brought you. Well, those are weird cookies. But they're not. <laughs> They're not weird cookies. Dude, they're like, like when you say there's cookies, I'm like, all right, like chocolate chip, or like <laughs> peanut butter, and I look oh. over and it's that, and I'm like, what is that? Like Why are there hard stuff. Christmas cookies, bro? Those are, like, dude, those, are, those are Easter Christmas cookies. Yeah, I can't eat that. <gasps> oh, that's funny. Y'all suck. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it's like, I hate, oh. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Man Cave for the next edition of the Sid's View Podcast. All kinds of things going on. Racing was good. UConn's kicking some ass. My Aunt Diego's in the house. What's up, brother? Oh, Sydney. Happy to be back, man. Looking forward to another episode of bringing everybody some entertainment. That's right. We got the Reminator on the controls as usual. Am I going to be the one doing this? Well, if I did, I would clearly screw it up, so it has to be you. <laughs> yo, yo, yo! <laughs> It's a beautiful Tuesday. I hang out with my boys. Let's do this. That's the kind of enthusiasm we're all looking for tonight. We got our man down in the bullpen. Rob, what's going Hello, on? Hello, Mr. Hyde. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Rob, and it is a fantastic day for another podcast. We actually had some racing action this week, so I'm looking forward to getting into it. Well, it sure wasn't in the NASCAR race, but we'll talk about that <laughs> later. <laughs> All right, everybody. So, listen, if you want to join us on the live chat, you have to become a member. Mm. No, you don't want to do that. <laughs> what is going on, Remy? Talk to me. There it is. There you go. You want to become a member to become uh, involved with the uh, chat. And uh, we have a good time with the live chat and the people that chime in. So uh, go to YouTube.com slash SidsView slash join uh, to join the party. And a uh, little update. Uh, this weekend, I, um, in addition to watching UConn kick some butt, like I had mentioned earlier, oh, yeah. I mixed in an interview with Todd Zegedy. So I got that off the books, uh, traveled down to the other side of the state, down in the uh, Remy's neck of the woods for that one. Ooh. And, um, miserable, by the way, the weather on Saturday. He was, oh, you drove in that rain? Yeah, he lives in, Ooh. uh, he that lives was, in Newtown. That was torrential. Yeah, it was it was brutal. It was oh. almost two hours to get home. Yeah, it was not fun. Wow. Yeah, doing like four <laughs> doing like four. Yeah, yeah, like white knuckling. Oh, you were yeah. definitely white knuckling. <laughs> yeah, it was not fun. But I he, had I had a couple of beers coming home from Foxwoods and I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. But uh yeah, he was a great interview. And um so I think, you know, like I've mentioned before, not only did was Mike somewhat of a mentor to him, but he just seemed to be in a lot of the relevant races that we're going to cover, like he was, he was badass. He Whew. he passed Mike Stefanik for his first win. Wow, Todd Zegedy. Wow, Mike Stefanik passed him for the lead in the uh, when Stefanik won at Bristol in Chris Hour's car, and uh, which was kind of his last significant win, really. Stefanik's, yep. yep. and then of course, as we mentioned, he led a majority of the the infamous uh, bash at the beach <laughs> at Daytona. <laughs> Yeah, uh, before Steve Park uh, yeah. took the win, so shall yeah. we say? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I had fun doing that, and um, the next one I have in line is um, hmm. I got Eddie Flimke Jr. and Andy Santier. I can't remember which one I'm doing first, but I'll keep you updated as those go along. Looking forward to some more interviews. That's awesome. Yeah, having a awesome good time with that. Awesome people. And uh, yeah, converting a ton of old uh, VHS tapes and stuff. So that's like right in my wheelhouse. You know, old. Uh, you know, Bush North races on TNN yeah. and uh, or uh, mod tour races from 93 on ESPN2. So there's some really cool you stuff. You know what? So. Just to put, it's like a small analogy. You know, the, the young kids today that are racing, like, uh, I'm going to say like my nephew or Hovey or 
I don't think they know how good Todd Zegedy was. I mean, he's yeah. equivalent to like a Doug Colby of today. Right. Mm. Right. He was that good. Yep. And, and quick, like opposite of Colby, who took a lot. He, he won the Sizzler early, yeah. but then he struggled to get a ride, as crazy as that sounds, for years. Yeah. Um, where Zegedy won Rookie of the Year and then the championship the next year. Uh, yeah, but he year. teamed up with Barker, and mm-hmm. they, oh, they were just yeah. real really bad good. to the bone. Yep. Yeah, so and then I he got t- in the two car. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people that you know the, the younger generation, it's still relevant to them because it's new enough that that guy was that good. Yeah, you know during that whole era, it's too bad they couldn't watch him because that era of modified racing, it was awesome. Right, it was yeah, for real sure. awesome. Yeah. So it sounds like he still keeps in the like, you know, Ronnie Silk shop is not far from him. Yep. And Copsick's not far from him, and uh, somebody else he had mentioned. So he pops in. So he pops into the shop. Yeah, I asked him like, do you, you know, have you been to the track? You know, you follow. He's like, oh, I'll watch stuff on TV. He's like, I actually haven't been to the track in a while, but. You know, he says, I, I'll go and see and he's Ronnie. still or, young. Yeah. Yeah, 37 years, I think he said, racing from, he started in go-karts. Wow. Or quarter midgets, I can't remember. And then up until he was running for DePisa last. Yep. Um, so, yeah, sounds like he misses it, but um, like with anything or uh, other drivers that I've heard, they get out of racing and it's easier to, <sighs> it's, it's like a to find it's, something else to do. Anybody that's listening out there that's a racer or involved with race cars, it's like it's like a needle hanging out of your arm. Yeah. You right. never <laughs> right. like I mean, you never get rid of it. I mean, it's right. always it's always lingering. You know, you're like you're trying to stay away from it, but you can't. Yeah. I mean, I have the same problem. I don't drive. I'm just as deep as I was when I was driving. <laughs> right, right. And I think a lot of those guys as as even Richie, yeah. That, you always mention Rich don't go to the track. He doesn't go to the track. But, He's a terrible fan. But he keeps up with what's happening. He does. He always. Sometimes my cousin Rich will call me, right, and, and I think like I'm in tune with a lot of stuff, and I'll be like, "How do you know that?" Right. <laughs> you know, That's like, so they all pay attention. Yeah, they still pay. Attention. They know what's yep. happening because they, like I said, you can't get the you can't get the needle out. Right. Right. It just doesn't end. No, I agree. Yeah. You're making me think of like the, the whole uh, Motley Crue movie. Yeah. Mickey yeah. Sticks. Yeah. Yeah. I woke up the needle still in my right. arm. I'm like, yeah, dude, you were messed up. Yeah. Well. <laughs> all right. So what stuck out to you this week, there, brother? Well. I'm going to tell you, if you didn't tune in to Flow Racing in South Boston and you watched the cup race instead, boy, did you miss a, <laughs> a race. Right, bro? Oh, believe me, I turned off Coda real quick. And we were in the group chat. Yep. And you, I'm like, I'm trying to watch the NCAA tournament because I'm a big basketball fan. Yep. And and I've got Flow going on my phone, and I'm watching the race, and you guys are chirping in about Coda and Priest, and I'm like... <laughs> Put it on South Boston. <laughs> well, you were the only person that was texting me. I got like three, four texts about South Boston. So I was like, oh, this has got to be good. And yeah. right when I tune in, I just see huge crash. And I'm like, oh, man. Well, listen, what, 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 what a show, right? Yep. I mean, I, from the the shitty cooler shirt that Woody Pitcat is wearing in the interview. Yeah. Right? What? I, I got to mention that real quick. The sponsor? What, what a marketing. Yeah, it's tremendous. Tremendous. Yeah, man, I, 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 I didn't think about that. What a great idea! And then, and, yes, <laughs> but uh, I was watching that race. You know, last week I still have modifieds. I, you know, because I'm in this country and it still pumps through my blood. I was just talking to Paul French last week, and I'm going to bring their whole deal up because. What happened there with him and Jake Crum on the back stretch, and the Drake, Jake Crum gets buried in the fence, and you know there was so much stuff going on on social media this week. I'm sure everybody that's tuning into this podcast right now, it had filled their news feeds about uh, Hirschman running this one into the fence, and, and then Woody got on and said he did the same thing to uh, Ryan Newman, and he mm-hmm. felt terrible. But it's such fast racing, short track racing at South Boston. And my man, Luke Baldwin. I know. Rolled out of there with the robe. He made uh, the king at the speed bowl not look so good this week. Yeah, well, he showed him how, like, that's what a king does. Right. right. Yeah, correct. The king of the modifieds. Correct. Did, did you yeah. see? So the feel-good story here is 
is I, I know I've mentioned this before, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but Tommy Baldwin has overcome his battles over the winter of cancer. Absolutely. Right? And he has Doug Colby driving his car. He has Ryan Priest testing. Uh, and then his son goes out and wins in a PSR car that's not even his. And did you see the first person on Vic on the track? Yeah, that was a great clip. Oh, it was awesome. Amazing clip. Yep. It almost gave me goosebumps, you know, because yeah. I'm sure. As a video guy, those are the clips that I want to capture every time we go to the track with cameras. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. just raw emotion. And, yep. and then for me, you know, I'm thinking, you know, my father had gone through cancer last year. He didn't win the battle. Yeah. Right? Tommy Baldwin was able to be there and be with his kids. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that's how I looked at it. Kind of. How sure. lucky is he to be here to experience this, experience this with his father, I mean, with his son, yeah. the wife. And, uh, you know, I've got to spend, I'm just going to call it like I hear it. There's been mixed emotions about the Baldwin brothers uh, walking around Stafford, just kind of. You know, flip floppy walking around, showing up, getting in really badass cars for Rocco, and people are like, you know, who is who is this kid? You know, who do they think <laughs> they are, right? So you can yeah. see how that could happen, right? Yeah. Right. When we were down at New Smyrna, uh, Carson Quav, I mean uh, Carson, what's the kid's name in the twenty three? Do you know him? Uh, I forgot his name. He's won back to back races. So, uh, but at any rate, him and Luke Baldwin had hung out on our trailer. For a considerable amount of time. And I almost feel bad for judging Luke Luke Baldwin the way I did because I didn't know him. And I was only going off what so-and-so told me, so-and-so told me. And I'm thinking to myself, after hanging out with this kid for the day, he's not a bad kid. I mean, I actually seen Billy Harmon talking to him, and Billy Harmon was right in his face. And a piece of, like, lettuce flew out of his mouth. Happens. It landed right on Luke Baldwin's finger. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep talking. Right? And me and Sean are like, like, I'm interviewing my live, and Sean's like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? As soon as we get done, Luke Baldwin looks down. He's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was genuinely super happy for him. It was a really good feel-good moment. It was a big race. I'm going to call Flo. It's almost nationally televised. Uh, because I think everybody's tuning into the race. He beat, not only did he beat Matt Hirschman, mm. he beat his dad and Doug Colby. Yeah. Yep. Two of some of the best yep. ever in our era. Yeah, plus you had Woody in that field. Ryan Wh Newman was in that field. Stacked. Yeah. Stacked field. And so... I was uh, super happy. I know people that comment Carson Lofton. Thanks, Bonza. So I met Carson Lofton, too. He was super nice. Him, and if you watch, he was one of the first one to congratulate Luke and Victory Lane because at New Smyrna, those guys were almost inseparable right. all the way around. They're really good friends. So that's my feel-good story for the day. I don't know if you guys have anything to put in. I know Fro is watching because when they had that pile up down the back oh, yeah. stretch, I think – I know Hirschman was going, but Jake Crum looked like, and Paul French were going to pull a rabbit out of their hat for Easter and steal a win there, yep. and it just quite didn't happen. But kudos to those guys for being damn competitive in that race with a stacked field. Yeah, and again, I mean, it's just such a great story for for Tommy. Like, you might not root for the guys he puts in the cars all the time, but, like, he's such a huge figure in the sport at every level. You might not root for his team all the time, but you're always rooting for him to still be around. He's just such a great figure for the sport. And, and he's awesome. He is. His cars, when they show yep. up, you know there's somebody damn good in them. Yeah. Yeah. And you know from Mikey Christopher, he is real badass in them. So when Jimmy blew it, Doug – I mean, Doug Colby snuck a third out of there struggling. Yeah. But, but anyways, you know – Did I, you guys – now, when you filled out your modified – mod, uh, Modified March Madness brackets. Were you? Did you have Junior in one of Baldwin's car when you made your decision? We'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> it's a valid question. It is a valid, a valid question. question. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, let's uh, get things rolling here. We got our girl Remy. She's ready with the Serve Pro Weekly update. <laughs> Oh, 
Next time, please do that dance when the graphic is not up Seriously. so everybody else can enjoy <laughs> the fun. Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about winners. Let's say a big congrats to Gio Ruggiero for winning the ARCA race at the Five Flags um, Speedway. Hold Definitely. on. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Right? See? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> He's bringing the house down, folks. Listen, Gio is doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, my my first thought is him. He's he comes off a little aggressive. He's an aggressive driver, but the kid is winning. Yep. He's winning races. Turning the, heads. Turning heads. The dude is from Seacon. Listen, he's in great equipment, but that's what you have to do. When you start getting at that level. Yeah. You don't want to be in any... I mean, listen, some of the worst things I've ever done was buy subpar motors or subpar this and put myself in mid-packs. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. I almost did it to my kid last year. So we try to step up our game. Those guys are doing it. They're bringing their A game, the A equipment, and he's putting it up. He's winning races. Congrats to Gio, his father, First Ford, the whole crew, uh, Venturini Motorsports, I'm really happy for him because, you know, we still chat when I see him. You know, like I told you before, we go back to Pops buying us shots at Longhorn on Wednesday night after the races. He didn't even, <laughs> he didn't even care about legend car racing anymore. He wanted to hang out at Longhorn with our whole crew. And that was his first question. You guys going to Longhorn tonight? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, so uh, so real happy for those guys. I, I love that news. Because he's a true local boy making it. And uh, I have one more. Tyler Tomasi's going down south now because I know they're from Seekonk. So mm -hmm. Tyler Tomasi inked a deal to go run late model stocks down south. Nice. So That's I'm just going to cool. give you that tidbit. I don't know if you knew that. but I did not. Thank congratulations, Seekonk for... boys. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah, and the return on investment there is huge, especially running up front. I'm not just talking about the prize money either. I'm talking about the media attention. The like media. Everybody. I've been hearing hit Ruggiero's name now Listen, for so long, for he, weeks now. Him and... Swalovich at Phoenix. Yep. Duking it out in a nationally televised arc oh, race with so 36 epic. cars. So epic. And they are all elbows up, getting after it. And then the rain and lightning came to end the race, which was just unfortunate. Unfortunate. I would have loved to see them duke it out because Swalovich is probably the next Jesse Love, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And and Geo, he's 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 back there smelling around the farts, you know. He's <laughs> he's getting real close, you know. Yeah. No, he'll get there. He'll, he'll get, get there. He'll so get there. I'm real happy for those Plus, guys. Plus, that was the best Phoenix race of that weekend. I mean, oh. Phoenix kind of sucks, but yeah, that's just a known fact. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But all right, go but, ahead, Rems. But he had to be smelling farts. Well, that's because that's what. See this nice little thing you got me here. It's an analogy he's comfortable with. Yes, yeah. thank you. Let's thank not you. go off the rails. Come yeah, on. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just Reel it up, folks. Reel it up. Farts. Yeah. I'm sorry. But I had to bring this because this is big news about Luke Baldwin beating Matt Hirschman at South Boston um, Speedway. Um, another news I have is Kirk Alexander, four-time MRS champ, was honored this past weekend at the MRS um, banquet. And in his speech, he announced that he will retire in his fire final race in june yeah he's just doing that one more race <clears throat> and um yeah it's kind of neat that he's going out on top he was the king of the mrs when it started i remember when they first started coming to the bowl and uh i remember the big chatter was uh you know he's a big fish in a small sea he's got to come to the tour blah 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 whatever the case may be but he got that series off the ground Oh yeah, uh, he he yeah. was the dominant driver, and then of course Pastriac came, and then McKennedy, and then for a while they were just getting everybody was running those races. Yeah, and so um, listen, he's had a good career. We, I'm glad that I got to see him a few times. He's won a couple times at the Bowl, if I'm not mistaken. So um, yeah, congrats to him, crafty veteran. Yeah, he's great. He's been great for that series. He's been great for modified racing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and and to do it last year, uh, you know. With the uh, APE car and, and win the championship for the MRS was just awesome. So, what a way to go out. Yeah, and I feel like the most liberating. Sid, what are you laughing about? I'm laughing at Bonza says Diego has lungs of steel. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> says so much in one breath. He already gave such yeah. a long-winded speech. But yeah, I mean, like I was saying, well, I feel thanks, like sponsor. <laughs> I feel like the most liberating thing as a driver is to end a, your career on your own terms oh. instead, of, instead of being pushed out for yep. like a rookie before you want to, or you yeah. have some hard crash, you got to step away. I feel like when you can just say, "All right, this is going to be my big final goodbye event." That's just so special. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. awesome. Yep. So, congrats to Kurt Alexander. Yep. Um, in case you guys don't know, um, the Wheel of Modifieds are racing this weekend mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. Richmond. Um, Marcello Rafano will make his debut. So. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty uh, awesome. <clears throat> I'm I'm psyched that they're racing on Friday. Um. Although that may interfere with the UConn game. That's going to be tough. Might have to watch it on a replay. Get, like, your laptop going and oh, then your TV. P and P, you're saying? Yeah. 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 Right, we'll see what I can do. No, that's cool. And that's great do, for Marcello. Does anybody know who he's racing for? Anybody online? I, who is he driving for? Is it his own car? Does anybody out there know? Because I, I was trying to find that out. But uh, it's it's really awesome. Where, where are they at? Richmond? Richmond, to go to such yeah. a big track too. Yeah, right. Oh, so cool. Mm -hmm. So cool. Yeah, it's um, you know, he's one of the young guns that I've oh, always Oh, the, the 17 car. Is that so is that one of the cars that It says Davini here. Davini, yeah. The so Davini is that team. Uh, yep. uh I think the kid um jeez, I'm drawing a blank. The 9. He won all the MRS races. He's my boy. Why the hell am I Tommy drawing Barrett? A... Yeah, Barrett. Didn't Barrett drive for those guys or is that I'm not sure. I don't know. So somebody online will correct me, <laughs> uh, but but congratulations to those guys for sure. Yep. All right. And then my last and final one, mm -hmm. um, NASCAR has taken over Bowman Gray Stadium's lease, Ugh. which I think is yeah, what does that mean? Does anybody know what that means? <clears throat> I don't know. It means they're going to be running the clash there. I can guarantee you that. You think so? Wow, that's a that's a great point. No, I mean, it is just a prediction, but I feel like, you know, they were talking about moving to L.A. How clash. do they put enough people in there? They packed the place for a regular mod race. I don't know. They did it with North Wilkesboro. I mean, Bowman Gray has That'd a lot of seating neat, around the track, actually. doesn't does, it? Does anybody know the seating capacity versus... North Wilkesboro? They could pack a lot of people in there. I mean, I've watched some of their races. I'm definitely not a huge fan of that track. Yeah, it's... They kind of go WWE style with it. It's all flat. Like, I don't really get the appeal, but yeah, they're going to try it, presumably. Dude, and I, it'll went, be I went what there. It is. They pack the house. They absolutely do. I mean, you walk in here, it's amazing. I'm like, I cannot believe. Mm. But like I told you before, up on the top side, it's it's almost like a fair mm -hmm. there's vendors everywhere i mean i can tell you this they're not a big fan of yankees i can tell you that yeah you know them damn yankees <laughs> <laughs> right here they come down invading our area because that's 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 country land down there yeah right yeah i'm i'm interested to see how like you know they do have that wwe aspect and now nascar's um going to take over the operations and if that changes at all like, I know, you know, years ago, NASCAR seemed to embrace the Hab Abbott boys type of mentality, which, yeah. you know, obviously some people aren't a big fan of, but. Um, That's definitely shifted, <laughs> for sure. And so do you think they're going to try to come in and, and curb that also with their Saturday night racing? I mean, that's what's made that place what it is. It would right. be really unwise for them to try to stop. Well, no, leave it to NASCAR to screw something up. Oh, well, they probably yeah. will. <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, if, if yeah, all they're going to do. And screw up this track. If all they're going to do is host like a standard race at Bowman Gray, I don't see how that could be good. It's not a right. great track for racing. Like, uh, it's completely flat. What is it, a quarter mile, right? Right. Yeah, I don't see how that could put on a good oh, product. Oh, there'll be a lot of fenders. I just think it's really weird that. Like, we all agree it's not real racing there, right? Like the Absolutely. The WWE well, I mean, well, it's is hard to say that because the guys that are racing there are racing real. I mean, they're working on their cars, but it's a show there. Yeah, it's definitely a show. It's a, but I guess what I'm trying I'm to say is— I'm going to tell you is, this. They packed the house. <laughs> no, I understand, but that's what I'm trying to say is majority of the people up north will say that is not racing. And yet here's the potential where NASCAR could come in and, and maybe try to— clean it up i guess why but we but that's what that's the weird thing about it is that we all agree that would be a terrible Look, decision it, because it would take away from the show which we all say is not really racing it's like, weird it, it's just kind of this circle of yeah because weirdness. That, that's what they're that's what they're <laughs> yeah. known for right like that's their thing for sure they but are. i don't think it's i don't think it's good but you got to know your audience to a certain extent like if yeah, they completely sure. change it up people are going to stop showing up right 
I don't know. I, I just know they, last they, summer. They have, they have heavy fans down yeah. there, though. Yeah, hardcore. Hardcore. Yeah. Like Tim Brown all the way to the end yeah. or, you know. Myers, Bert, yeah, yeah, Burt Myers. Those guys have done. You know the one thing that those guys have done? Like the Myers oh. brothers? They have social media down pat. Those guys. Oh, I've have, said that for years. Yeah. Burt Myers is a master. Yeah, you said media. it. They have and killed has been. it. Yeah. With the gear. They show up to. Remember they used to show up to Thompson in their big haulers? Yeah. I bought a T-shirt. Sure you did. I bought a Jason Meyer. I didn't like Bert. I bought a number four T-shirt. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I still have it. Yeah. I mean, again, though, all I know about that track, I saw a clip. It was either last summer or the summer before where this there was like a wreck, right? And then the guy involved in the wreck, I guess he was like the victim of the crash, per se. He was yeah. like driving across the track through the grass trying oh, to yeah. hit the other guy. Well, that happens weekly like, there. Yeah, but I, that's, again, why I don't think it's legitimate racing. Yeah. I don't know how they let that go every week because it seems like they're on the verge of hurting somebody. Yeah. Yep. People are out of the car. They're still pushing the car around. And it's like the speed bowl of the 86 <laughs> happening. <laughs> Jimmy Lloyd doing donuts with the with, animal. Yeah. With CJ Fry on the hood, <laughs> smashing the hood. And he's just blowing donuts. And we're like, <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Rodney Redshaw acting like a complete animal. God rest his soul. Man, you but, were just name dropping. Some, oh, yeah. Some it was a legends. lot. It was a lot of fun. Well, on that tip of uh, dropping some nostalgia names, let's get into our uh, <laughs> nostalgia <laughs> nugget of the week. Good segue, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, so this week we're going to talk about the 1980 blast-off at the Waterford Speed Bowl. It was the earliest the Speed Bowl had ever opened on March 23rd, 1980. It was the sixth annual Blast-Off 100, the open competition race at the time. And some of the legendary people that showed up to participate in this event included Ron Bouchard, Ken Bouchard, Reggie Ruggiero, George Summers, Greg Sachs, and Charlie Jazombek, all near Hall of Famers. The Sunday race was preceded by a North nor'easter that dropped snow and then melted into just tons of rain that they, you know, back then the speed bowl was easily filled up as it is the bowl. And uh, so they tried dearly to uh, get that place drained. And the, the event went off. They had to actually stop what was going on to patch the freaking track. I've never seen anything like this. I remember I was doing the Speed Bowl documentary and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. They actually stopped, I think it was qualifying so that they could um, fix the track. Now check this out. This is a picture of them wow. actually trying to repair the asphalt sometime during qualifying. The guy with his arms folded there in the background is Harvey Tattersall who used to own the track. And they actually, they had a meeting where they, uh, with the drivers, and they said that they wanted to continue. So they actually patched it up and got to work. Uh, Marty Radwick started on the outside pole and took the lead on the first lap and led every single lap for the victory. It remains the earliest that the Speed Bowl has ever opened, and it was the last time that it was a 100-lap race. The next year, they converted it to reflect the calendar year. So in 1981, it was an 81-lap race and so on, which they're doing something similar this year at the Bowl, actually. They're doing it. It's going to be a 73-lap uh, race because it'll be the 73rd season of speedball racing. Interesting. So, yeah. You know what the funny part about that is? They're still doing the same stuff today. What do you mean? With patching the... Uh... Fixing the wall. Oh, yeah. Well, not <laughs> patching the asphalt, <laughs> right. but yeah, yeah. There's always something happening. Right. Well, here's the crazy thing, right? You think about how bad that asphalt had to be. Oh, yeah. And they still didn't pave the track for another eight years. Wow. You know? Yeah. I mean, the the, the track was pretty bad. I mean, you could make the argument the speedball track needs to be repaved now, but it wasn't in the shape that, that it was before it was repaved with right. the quarter wakes, you know? Right. So... All right, so let's talk about, uh, you had a little good nugget there you saw on Race well, ACT, well, right? Well, you see, I, I try to do a little investigative work and bring something to the team today. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, thank you, Remy, after a bunch of ball busting, I did a little bit of research. I said, let me look around in my busy day, see what I could figure out. Mm -hmm. Race Day CT had put out, and I don't know if anybody's seen it, but there was the Thompson Icebreaker, all the divisions, and what were you excited to see, or something of that nature? Mm -hmm. And there's, I printed it out. There's... Can we give our answers before you give the results? Okay. Uh, how do you want to do that, Rob? What... So I'm going to tell you all the divisions. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Go. Let's do that. We're going to start late models. Yeah. Mini stocks. Uh -huh. 
the Tri-Track Series, the Pass Super Lates, the Trucks, SK Lights, Street Socks, the new Sunoco 604 Mods, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. last but not least, the Wheel and Tour. Mm-hmm. So I voted mm-hmm. because I just felt like voting. Sure. Why wouldn't you? Right. But then I wanted to look at all the reviews, and I was... Surprised that your vote was not in the majority? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah. I'm a little pissed about it. <laughs> but what are you guys? I mean, I, I have them all down here, and I have the results. All right, ladies first, Rem. What, what would you, how would you answer this one? Um, I'm more excited for the tour, but because I haven't like been at a tour race. Tour over the tri-track? Because I haven't been to one. I know mm. it's you haven't been to what a tour race? It's been a while. Like yeah, it was New Hampshire. I mm-hmm. don't remember what year. I think I was still in high school. Yeah, so, all right. A long time ago, we'll maybe eight that years. Answer. Yeah, we'll accept that answer. So. What about you, Rob? Man, I love watching the tour, but I would say the series I'm the most excited for is the Streeters. Wow. Hey, go! I love nice. watching we go, the Streeters. Here we go, fro. Here we go, fro. Streeters. That was just, I was in shock to see that. Streeters at Thompson are pretty awesome. They are. I used to have this yeah. joke with my dad that they had like the perpetual lap Dude, one because they would always ball it up on the, the first street lap. The street stocks are classic. They are. Yeah. They great. are one of the, I don't care what anybody says or anybody that's watching, it's one of the best divisions there. It is. And, and they're like. And everybody's in beast mode every lap. That's what I'm saying. And they're so bulky <laughs> and like tanky that they Dude. can just beat on each other for the whole yeah. lap, yep. every lap. It's fantastic. Everybody's chewing on the steering wheel. Every driver yeah. is like. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> So. I would, I would, uh, I would have picked that tri track race. Oh, don't be boring. What Sid. are you talking about, boring? Jeez, everybody picked that. Well, we'll reevaluate afterwards and see if it was the best race. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Trucking? It's> just... <laughs> so... What would you pick? The trucks? No, okay. the street stocks. Right. Yeah, Diego. Yeah, that's what I mean, I'm talking I, about. I, listen, I'm a street stalker through and through. That's where we started. I mean, that's where you know my brother and I just you, I always. I thought you were going to do late models. But I mean. No. No. Am I going to be the one doing Right. Sid, <laughs> you, you were a little late. I know. I, she caught me off guard. I, I wasn't expecting she that. She said it's like this. So that's a good time for a drop. <laughs> well, let me get on that. Hey, the people oh. in chat, they like the street stocks. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of good people waiting to see those streets. The streeters. Oh, yeah. I hope they have. Listen, there's nothing better than 28 streeters at Thompson. Start I agree. Feature. You're like, oh, get, get the popcorn, grab a beer. Let's watch the show. Like I would, right. I used to go to Thompson, and they would say limited sportsmen coming to the track, and oh. I was like, "Here we go!" Oh, yeah. Every time I had to go get food. That's All what right. I was waiting for. Popcorn and a beer is probably what you're going to do now, because we are going to decide the final four of our modified March Madness. Sid, you are good, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. You're good. So let's giddy up here and uh, let's throw up the bracket now. See where we're at. So there is the complete bracket. So we got eight people left. And Ramsey, all right? She's yeah, getting nervous, nervous over here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's let's coordinate this here. Let's go into the silver spoon bracket. All right, dude, hold uh, on. Uh, uh, <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. Oh, it's been a blast. <laughs> this has been so much fun. I hope everybody's enjoyed this now, as much as we have. Now we believe these two guys right now are uh, tuning in here to see who who we're gonna uh, move on to the final four. And shout out to Austin Beers for his amazing performance in that sim race. <laughs> 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 My guy was flipping and no. he got back on track. <laughs> Fro, that was awesome. Yeah, oh, well yeah. done on that. Oh, thank well you, done. thank awesome. you. That was a, that was a lot of fun to make. I oh yeah. All right, so let's do the. Um, Let's go. Oh, hold on. Sydney's got to get his stuff together here. Yeah, come on, let's go. I know, my bad. All giddy right. up, giddy up. So let's go with you, Remy. You go first and give us your pick on this one. And Me? Yeah, and then we. I want you to tell us why you made the pick as well. See, this was, like, the hardest one I feel out of everyone. And took me about a couple hours to choose. couple hours? Wow. Yeah. Like, wow. I was literally sitting there, and I was just like, okay, what if Austin was on the inside? What was? What if Mikey's on the inside? So I have played every scenario, and so I ended up just, and I felt like Mikey was going to wow. wreck Austin for it. Wow. <laughs> so I went with Mikey. 
Wow. wow. That's, that's okay. awesome. Deep thought on that one. That it was, was really hard. Okay. <laughs> All right. Diego, you're up next, my friend. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I didn't pick Mikey from the get-go. Mm-hmm. And then as the rounds went along, I, you know, I'm a believer in Mike Christopher. I'm a believer in the Christopher family and what they've done in stock, uh, stock car racing, SK racing in general. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anybody get a chance to see Austin Beers at the World Series? Woo! Yep. <laughs> Don't be on the outside! <laughs> <laughs> Austin Beers took it down for me. Okay. Austin Interesting. Beers. All right. We go over to you, Rob. So... This was a hard pick, I won't lie. I, a lot of them were hard to pick for completely different reasons. And I know Mikey's been putting up some good numbers recently in the SKs, but I gave Austin Beers the edge because of his recent performance on the tour. Wow. Okay. And so I haven't been picking him either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's over to me, huh? Yeah, what are what are we? Two two one right two now? Two to one. Beers, right? Beers. Beers. All right. So it's funny because I seem to be having some uh, laptop issues where I can't find my man Fran's pick. Fran, you're on the chat. Why don't you go next here? Tell us, <laughs> tell us who you pick. <laughs> Bail me out right here, bro. Come on. Oh yeah. Well, I can tell you this. Yeah. It's it's been awesome. Oh, the pick just came in. Oh, that's there it. he is. He went with beers. So, so that's it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Austin. Moves on to the oh, final yeah. four. And congratulations yes. to Mikey Christopher. I went with my man Mikey Jr., by the way. Yeah, congrats yeah. for taking it this far. That, that was fun. And he yeah. still took it to beers anyway, two, three. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it wasn't a sweep. So Austin gets the uh, gets to move on here into the final four. So let me get on this here. We're going to update that bracket for you. We're going to throw that right there. So there is our first member of the final four. Whoa, wow, final we're getting four. to division Austin champions. <laughs> this is crazy. Now, he will be facing off against the winner of the other bracket. And these are just absolute heavyweights right here, okay? So let me see the order that here I wanted to have picked here. So we're going to go with Remy. Why do you keep choosing? Ladies first. <laughs> Come on. Ladies first, Come on. Rims. Um, okay. Because I haven't been choosing Ron the whole bracket. Why would I do it again? So I chose Woody. Interesting. Okay. Okay. That's well an done. interesting mm-hmm. reason. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Rob? You saw him at the World Series, boys. And girls. And girls as well. Mm-hmm. I got Ron Silk moving on. He is still firing off on all cylinders. Okay. One to one to you, Diego. Dude, this, this right here, if this race is at Stafford, a complete heavyweight race. Mm -hmm. This is a clash of the Titans right here. There's not many better than Woody at Stafford, for sure. But but it's hard to beat Ron Silk. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) So Silk 2-1, huh? Silk 2-1. So that's over to me. So here's what happened. Here we go. Yesterday, I'm trying to figure out who's who can who's going to win here, okay? Right. The phone rings. It's Ryan Newman. Stop. He said, pick Cat right out of talent. So I said, <laughs> Ronnie Silk, too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what? Stop. You hey. got a call from Newman? <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> Listen, Whoa. that's what he told Pernasiglio on the broadcast. I had to take it into consideration. All right, so that's the matchup there. We're going to have Austin Ooh. Beers. Ooh. Going against Ron Silk. I'm gonna call it. That's yeah. Franny picked Ron Silk as well. Four I, one. I, you 4-1 know, victory for him. That's that's a big big matchup because I think Beers is on the brink yep. of amazingness, of breaking out. And yeah. when he breaks out. out, he's gonna. I mean, run. he's almost broke out, but he's on the verge of really breaking out. I mean, Silk out. did look unstoppable when we were down at New Summer. Oh, he sure the that. hell did. Yeah. And he's been doing it for so long. Like yeah, right. my earliest memories of the mods, it was still Silk winning. Yeah. I had to pick him. He's just too dominant. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's go over to the Twitter Wars bracket. Two of the craftiest veterans you can ever find. All right, let me see what I got for order. Remy, I'm gonna not have you go first Thank on this one. God, All right. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have Diego go. Oh me. <laughs> All right. Who do we have here? Colby. 
uh, against Keith Rocco. We have one of the best all-time tour, one of the best all-time SK. Listen, I'm an I'm a elbows up to the steering wheel kind of guy. Yep. Never been a massive Colby fan. Keith Rocco is the show. Hmm. He's moving on for me. Interesting. Yep. Well, I'm going to go next. This is a tough one for me. <laughs> You're <a> funny, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. You know, I just... Uh, I don't have any funny thing to say here. I just uh, I picked Kobe on this one. Wow. Yeah. Nothing funny about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Kobe's nasty. They would have been. They would have been side by side to the stripe. Uh, I don't know if it is, um, you know, tour success versus SK success that was the difference for me. But I picked. I picked Kobe. All right. So uh, let's send it over to you, Rob. What do you got? Well, there's not going to be a fake out this week on this one, guys. <laughs> For everything that Diego just said, and being a Stafford guy, I got to pick Keith. Yeah! I got to <laughs> pick Keith. He is a wheelman through and through. I feel like he's one of the I, dirtiest out there. I think he is He is definitely an elbows-up kind of driver. He is. And coming for the gold when it matters, I put money on him. Again, I mean, we've already said this, but don't yeah. be on the outside. Yeah, mm -hmm. I put money on him. You just it's showed up. your age there, by the way, because um, Kobe was the Stafford guy before you or Rocco, but that's mm -hmm. all right. We'll leave that aside. That was a long time <laughs> ago. <laughs> all right, two to one, and now we're going to kick it over to Remy. You didn't want to go first, so we're going to have you go fourth. What do you got? I chose Rocco. Wow. Whoa! Send him through. Let's go. Kobe no gets drama. knocked out of the final four. Wow. Oh, people are going to be talking Six about that. Six-time mod champ. Yes. That's unbelievable. Right. Move Fran on. also went with uh, Rocco. So that's, Did he? They, yep, that's four, four to one. one Keith. I was wow. the only one to pick Kobe. Wow. All right, Keith Rocco, like it's 2015 in the final four, killing it. Right. <laughs> All right. right. And now we're going to go over to the three peat bracket where we have just the absolute Cinderella story. Oh, yeah. All right. The eight seed, Brian Narducci, against Ronnie Williams in the potent 50 car. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's see what I had marked down here for an order. Let's go with Rob. Why don't you start us off here, guy? You know, I love to see a Cinderella story. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I just couldn't see this one through. I had to go with Williams. All right. Diego, well, I'm 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 with Rob with the with the, I'm gonna say Fro with the Cinderella story. It's <laughs> it's been great. I'm a believer in Narducci. I think the dude is a shoe. He can wheel, but it's tough to beat the speed demon of Ronnie Williams. So Ronnie Williams is moving on for me. Sorry about that, Narducci. <laughs> well, uh, same thing here. I think. Uh, it would have been a nice battle, maybe into the last set of turns, but I think that uh, Ronnie did just too much for for Brian here in the uh, in the in the uh, final eight. So that is going to push Ronnie through, and I believe he had it was a uh, oh was it wrong one? Here we go, boom. Yeah, it was a five zero sweep for Ronnie. So wow. we all love Narducci, love the Cinderella story, but that is going to set up an absolutely epic matchup, by the way, between. Keith Rocco and Ronnie oh. Williams, which at one time was a very heated rivalry. Mm -hmm. It's been a little cool there's, in there's... recent times. And then we have Austin Beers against the defending tour champ, Ron Silk. So Silk's a one seed, Beers a two seed, Rocco a five seed, probably the Cinderella of the uh, final four, as weird as that sounds. Right. And Ronnie Williams, the two seed. So Rocco versus Williams and Silk versus Beers next week. And then, so we will pick next week. We're going to pick not only the um, championship, but we're going to uh, the championship pairing. But we'll also pick the winner. So we'll do three picks next week. Perfect. All right. So a lot of fun with that, and uh, be sure to tune in next week so we can uh, wrap that fun little segment. Yeah, you up. know the, the great thing there is the Williams Rocco thing. Remember yeah. that mm -hmm. back at the when was that? Oh well, let's listen. We did the show in 2019. I mean, there was actually fights and stuff. In 2019, they were um, just a lot of verbal sparring, dominated really by Rocco. Yeah, oh yeah. And uh, you well, know, he is a ball buster. Oh, you know, he is a big time ball buster for yeah. sure. 
and uh, and they had that year 2019 SK 5K. Yeah, that's one of the greatest races we've ever captured on at, at any track anywhere. Uh, yeah, those two side by side, we had cameras on all of them. Oh, it was so freaking awesome. Yeah, just one of the best races I've ever seen. But yeah, and then there's a lot more shenanigans in the in the couple years past. Well, you know what's funny? We do these brackets. Now this is not planned out by any of us. No, nope. And this is how it ends up in the final four. It's so cool. Yeah, that for is sure. so cool. So um, yeah, Austin and uh, Silk again. That's kind of like uh, you know the guy that's on top right now and the guy that's uh, scratching to get there. You know. Oh yeah. So um, first and third, I think Austin finished third last year. So. Um, yeah, all right, so that's our final four. All right, so let's carry on, shall we? Let's get down to the popcorn stat chat with our man Rob. Let's see what he's got going on for us today. Still doesn't want to do it for me, Ram. What happened? All right, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to throw Rob's thing in here, right? Ready? Boom. Nope. Damn it. We're going to try it again. Rob, I'm 0 for 2 for you on this one. But what, I know. I here's what like, we what? want. We just want you to stay patient, guy. That's all. That's all no, we're I, asking for. Yeah, I'm patient. All right. I'm Th- real patient. I mean, you just wanted me to play the song again. That is a pretty I good I do tune. like the song, <laughs> It's kind of begging, right? It's, it fits the vibe. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, once again, I can't really call it a slow week because we did have the South Boston race. So my one real stat for you guys was the amount of cars in that big one, which I counted multiple times to be 17. Wow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. And the other stat is uh, the number that caused it, which is 60. Right. Oh, you're calling it like that? Yeah. I mean, I got the sign right behind me. (laughs) 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 Yep. Wow, who's the? What does it say? Who's the silver spoon? <laughs> who's the silver spoon now? Who's, who's the, the silver, silver spoon, spoon now? now? And speaking of which, I just want to give a shout out to Remy here. I have this fine Easter egg <laughs> gifted to me by Remy, which says "silver spoon" on the front of it. I know you can't really see that here. Right, right. And there is also a spoon drawn on the back. So <laughs> this one's personalized really just for me one. and my favorite uh, phrase here. Oh, that's great. What a wreck, yep. though, huh? <laughs> yeah. How many was there wrecked in there? 17? I counted 17. They didn't release the official number, but every time I looked at it, I counted 17 cars. Yeah, you know who snuck a top five out of that? Who? Or five or six? Bello. Wow. Yeah. Bello was like a fifth or a sixth. Right. Just kind of stayed alive, kept his nose clean, and it was either a fifth or sixth out of that. So good I job. remember towards the end, right, they, they said his name in the top five. I'm like, oh, he's just been... Yeah. Keeping his nose clean all Keeping this his race. nose yeah. clean. That was a bad wreck, though. Yeah. It's a short, uh, narrow track back there, and I think Jake Crum got run out of room. Just good, hard racing. Yep. Okay. And uh, besides that one stat, I have some more of those little debates from last week for you guys. Bring it. So I want to start it off. Which series provides the better racing? SKs or the SK Lights? Jeez. I think recently it's been the SK Lights, no? Yeah. That, we're talking at Stafford, right? I mean, or anywhere. It's it's a general question. I mean, Stafford is obviously the best direct comparison, I would say. Yeah. That's we'd, have the to main use, track. we'd have to use Stafford as the track. I Yeah, okay, that's fair. Right, because Waterford doesn't get enough cars to compare. No, no. Yeah, I mean, they're both good. I still think the SK has put on a good show, but it's amazing that... I mean, how often are they having 30 cars? Is that, like, regular every week? The SK Lights? Yeah. They sometimes get up to 40 cars. That's Dude. ridiculous. And it's great. And I, I've told you this before. So it's become a Friday night tradition for us. Yeah. Scale our cars. Yep. Uh, we get some pizza. And we work on our car until the SK Lights come on. <laughs> right. Yep. And everybody pulls up a chair. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, and that's the honest to yeah. God truth. Right. So, I mean, I watch the SKs, too. I hate it when I miss a lap of the SK lights, you know, because uh, that's that's always a dogfight to me. Yeah, I mean, we got Bonza in chat saying there was only one week last year they did not reach 30 cars in the wow. SK lights. And, yeah, I mean, with that, that many up-and-coming drivers trying dude. to make a name for themselves, like, it's just a great show every week. Yeah. And, and I see people, some people come into my shop to buy T-shirts, and I think I said this maybe off the record, but, you know, they want to go up there and race. <laughs> Yeah. Like an SK light or a late model or something. Right. right. And so uh, I, I got to give the nod. I love SKs, though. I really do. Yep. What I like about the SK lights is there's a lot of them. What I don't like 
is that they wreck a lot of stuff, I think, because there's so many of them. Yeah. But I'm going SK Lights. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm cool with there being, like, one wreck every race. Like, if right. you want to just have one big wreck, like, whoa, like, there's the spectacle. But at the right. same time, when they get into the habit of just wrecking every lap, it does get annoying. Yeah. But well, I would say more often than not, they put on a great product, and it's purely because of the car count. Yeah. Yep. I, I'm, I'm going I'm going SK Lights. Yeah, same sure. here. You too? F- yeah. Grab- were you about to call me Flo? Yeah, I was. <laughs> Flo. <laughs> Wrong answer once again, James. <laughs> oh, is it back to me? Yeah, back yeah. to you there, Chief. Okay. Come on. Next debate. That was a good one, guys. Thanks for that. <laughs> Do you like the high banks or the flat tracks? So this is going to be a weird answer because, I mean, Stafford's just clicking on all cylinders and you would... Most likely describe that as a flat track, dude. Could you imagine? But if, if I'm banked? building, if I'm building a track, dude. I'm building it with banks. What if you're building a go kart track tomorrow? What are you building? <laughs> what if, imagine if you built like a little banked go kart track that you could go rent cars? It's just a little oval, mm. dude. If you built a point two mile oval with twenty five degrees of banking, that'd be an amazing track for go karts, <laughs> especially. That'd be amazing. <laughs> could you imagine if Stafford was banked? Oh, it would be incredible. It'd be such a fast half mile. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like Bristol. It would be like Bristol, yeah. But besides, the corners are different. But I'm taking banked all day. Mm. Banking keeps the car in. They're fast, right? You can get in there deep, and the, the banking just keeps the car. You can feel it in the wheels and tires. You go to Stafford, and it's just like Stafford to me. Like I've driven it a couple of times, so I don't have a lot of experience. Super finesse track. You've got to know the track. You've got to know the groove. You've got to know your lift points. Yep. There is a finesse to Stafford, and if you don't go there, I mean, even my brother's going up there in a streeter and got his ass handed to him. Yeah. Right? Because you just have to know the track, and if you don't have any time there and you're racing against a Hydar or one of these guys, yep. they're going to they're gonna put the whipping on you. Can, can I get that whip real quick? You sure can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yeah. No, I think it's um, the hardest. Stafford's the hardest track to go there and immediately be competitive, right? It's the, it's the, it's. Would you say it's the the track that you have to uh, have the most seat time there to be Stafford, successful? Yeah, I. You can't just show up to the first. I don't think you can if you haven't raced a track. You cannot show up at that track. And go out and win. I don't think so. No, I mean, it's the finesse of the track. And on top of that, the car counts are so huge that there's like, yeah. in, in every race, there's like 10 real competitors, I feel right. like. Right. But I mean, just to like, like if you go to the Speed Bowl and you have a good crew and a good car, you can win. Even if it's your first night. I mean, Ronnie Williams showed up, I think, one time for the first time and almost knocked down a win of yeah. not being there. Yep. You can't do that at Stafford. Right. I don't think you can. <clears throat> yeah, no. remember Ray Parent came in the late model and it was like his second race. He he beat Bruce Thomas. Right. On a, on a, because yeah. you can do that. It's a banked. Yeah. If your car's set up right and you're a shoe, you can get it done. Stafford's a lot lot trickier. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Let's wrap it up. All right, everybody. Listen, we had a blast as we always do. Uh, looking forward to you guys checking us out on the socials because every day we're dropping new content. And we're just going to have more of that for you all throughout the week. Diego, what do you got for shout-outs? Well, we got to thank Pro for the weekly update. Waddell Communications for the Nostalgia Nuggets. Hoosier Tyrese for the Popcorn Stat Chat. And, of course, Vault Productions for this kick-ass studio. And we want to thank all you podcast members for supporting us and making this thing all happen for us. So don't forget to check us out. Thursday is going to be the next time we're dropping content. And we are going to have one about the... Uh, SK Light's best appearing, which was very heated, by the oh, way. Awesome. <laughs> My girl Remy got me an egg, and it said Sid's favorite car design, which this is a, a bright orange car. You're going to have to want to tune in the SK Lights to see that one. We'll see you next week. Damn it, Remy. What did I do wrong this time? Jesus, get that credit out there.